We're now working on question 1.3.5 and we're given a bunch of data right here. This data is not in order. It would be very nice to put it in order. And then what we're gonna do is fill out this table right here. So I'm gonna, I copied, highlighted all these with left click, control C to copy, or you can right click and copy. I'm gonna paste them here, control V to paste. Now, these are out of order. I do need to sort them. If you highlight them all and go sort, you can do that. Uh, I wanna go smallest to largest. If you notice, I believe it only sorted each column, so it didn't actually sort them uh, properly here. So what I'm gonna do is move this data. So I'm gonna move uh, one column at a time. I like this column here. I'm gonna move this, so I'm highlighting. I'm left-clicking and dragging is how you highlight. Notice the cursor went to a plus when uh, the cursor changes to these up, down, left, right arrows. I'm now going to click, left click and drag and it moves wherever you want it to go. So I'm gonna put it right below. Now I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm left clicking and dragging. And if you make a mistake and accidentally overlap, it will say, you sure you wanna replace? You probably do not wanna hit replace, so I'm going to cancel. So now I'm gonna drag it in and be a little more precise. Drag this in. Now I'm running out of room, so what I'm gonna do is just drag these a little bit, and then scroll down, drag them into place, and then the last one, drag that into place. All right, I have all the data here. Now, if you notice, there's too much to fit on the screen, so I can change my zoom. I can click these buttons down here, so I can zoom. You can zoom way, way out, so you can't barely see anything. So that's one way to highlight more of it. If you zoom out really far, you can highlight the whole thing. Uh, at some point that becomes hard to do, so I'll show you a few other ways to highlight it. So I'm gonna zoom back in so I can't see everything. I know this is the first element here because I see a one. These are the uh, row number. If you scroll down, you'll see you're in row 30 and the top one on the screen is 19. So I wanna highlight all these. So if you click on one, I'm holding the shift key and clicking again. So again, I held the shift key and clicked. And if you do that, you can highlight uh, anything between the first thing and the last thing you click on. So what I'm gonna do is click on the first one and then scroll to the top. And I'm going to do shift left click. And that should highlight all of them. Uh, somewhere around here, so it says count 30 right here. That's the number of selected cells that contain data. So I'm gonna highlight way less, and now it says count 10. Uh, oops, I guess it copies of the clipboard too, but so now I'm gonna highlight the first one, scroll down, shift, left click, highlights everything, and I now have 30, great. Now I can finally sort. So I have them in one column. We're gonna go sort, smallest to largest. Okay. Uh, you can scroll down, make sure it's actually smallest to largest. Looks good. So now we're gonna fill in this frequency table here. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna copy all the headings right here. So again, control C to copy, control V to paste. Uh, it's a little bit annoying. Uh, you could make the rows a lot wider, uh, but then you won't be able to see everything. So I'm just gonna make the font a bit smaller, so um, it's more reasonable. And under temperature, I also need these values here. So I couldn't copy everything because I was worried it would weird stuff would happen if I try to copy those. So I copy these, Control C to copy, and I'm going to start down here. Control V to paste. Now look what happened. That was not what I wanted. So that formatting got very messed up. So I'm gonna try destination formatting. Uh, so again, I right click and destination formatting. Uh, if you're a keyboard shortcut, it's control shift V is destination formatting. So put all these extra spaces in 
No worries, we know how to move data. Very easy to do. Just click on what you want to move. There we go. All right, so we're going to build this frequency chart now. So temperatures from 70 to 74. So here's 70 to 74. I've highlighted all of it. Frequency is how frequent or how many times did it occur. So you could go and count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's 10 right here. So my frequency is 10. But I'm not great at counting, and I've already forgotten one. I didn't even start at the top, actually. I skipped that. Uh, so let's go 70 to 74 properly. So there should be 11, but remember, count is already down here. So I have that count 11. So that's how many are here, 11. 75, there is no 75, so I'm starting at 76. So it's 75 to 79. So it's 76 through 79. Now I can see that there's six, but you double check by just looking at the count. There's six of them, no problem. 80 to 84, there is no 80 here. So we're starting at 81 and through 84. There's no 84, so you don't go to the 85, you gotta stop at 83. There's only four here. And 85 to 89. 85 to 89, four as well. All right, 90 through 94. So there's no 90, no 91, but there's 92, 93, 94. There's five here. All right, five. Okay, there's a good chance I messed up on some of these. So what I'm gonna do is insert a total. And what I want is to add up all these. So if you look at the bottom, it says sum 30. So I could just type in 30. That would work, but there's a better way to do this. So I'm gonna go equals sum, S-U-M. You can also just hit tab. It'll put the parentheses in. Now I could separate all these with commas and hit enter. That's great. That's what I wanted, adds up the sum is add them all together and it adds up all these. You can see the colors here, all of them are selected, matches the blue, red, purple, green, pink. All right, there's a faster way to do this. So inside here, and again, uh, the way I did this is I clicked on the first one. Uh, if you just left click, it only picks one. You have to hold down sh uh, control and it will select other ones. But I want to get them all from D2. So D2, oops, D2, notice there's a column D and a row 2. So that's D2. And I want to go to, so that's a colon, column D, row 6, D2 to D6. And if you look at that, it highlights all of them right there. And I'm going to hit Enter. So that's the sum of everything here is 30. Okay, so that's how to do a sum. There's a few other ways to do this. So I typed in D2 colon D6. The colon matters, it's not semicolon, it's regular colon. So, and I'm double clicking to get inside of here. So there's another way to do this. You can delete that. You can click and I'm just left clicking and dragging. So I can left click and drag D2 to D6, enter. And last way to do it that I know of is you can click the first and then shift click the last. Okay, so that's how to get the total. Now, why is that important? How many did I start with? 30, so there's 30 to start with. All these better add up to 30 and they do. All right, so that's frequency. Now we can finally enter some answers. 11, six, four, four, five. All right, I did not submit anything else, or I did not enter anything else, so I'm gonna hit submit. You can do this on the homework questions. The quiz, you gotta turn in everything at the same time, but on the homeworks, you can answer some, some parts, but not all parts. So now I know my frequencies are good. We're gonna do the relative frequency next. 
All right, relative frequency. What is that? It is the uh, frequency divided by the total. Uh, so that's here. Now I want to put uh, some more information here. You can right click and insert. That inserts a row. If I want an extra column, I'll right click and insert. That's an extra column. Now if I don't want it, I can undo with control Z. I can also right click up at the column and go delete. Uh, so that's how to get rid of things. If you delete with uh, information in there, oh, I guess they'll just let you do it. All right, so be careful. I undid my deletion with control Z. All right, relative frequency. So here we take the frequency divided by the total. So again, that's D3. It used to be D2, but I added another row. So it's D3 divided by D9. That's the relative frequency. Let's just type this in. Usually four decimal places is generally the uh, default number to use sometimes. All right, I do need to round here. So this number, uh, Excel can round for you. So sometimes you do need to go here and pick a number. And I want to go to four decimal places, so 0.3667. You can feel free to round by yourself. You don't have to round in Excel. It's totally fine. All right, so we got that right. Now we need the rest of the relative frequencies. So I'm going to show you copying and pasting. So you can copy control C, paste with control V. What in the world happened? Divide by zero. Okay, so I'm gonna double click it so we can see inside. So we do have D4, that's great, that's the frequency, but what in the world happened? We're dividing by this empty thing down here. So there's a few ways to fix it. You could um, move this. So again, make sure the cursor is the four arrows, the black arrows, you can move it up like that. Okay, it's one way to fix it. I'm gonna copy and paste again, and we're gonna have a similar problem, double clicking. So you could fix it by moving this up. Uh, you could also fix it by just typing in the right number, D9. There's a third way you can fix it. The problem is every time I paste, if you notice, I pasted one cell below, so it basically dropped each of these by one value, made them each go one below which is what I wanted for the blue. It's not what I wanted for the red. The red, I don't want to change the number. So I want the number to stay the same. So what you do is you put a dollar sign in front of the number. It won't change anything when I hit enter here. It still uses D9. But when I copy and paste it, what happens, uh-oh. Oh, okay, yeah, it's supposed to be the same. It still uses D9. It didn't let that move. Uh, it did, the D5 became a D6, so again, you can double click here. This was D5, and this one is D6. Uh, if I copy and paste again, Control C, Control V, uh, go in there. You can see D7 divided by, again, D9. All right, I'm gonna show you how to do this much faster. So up here, I can just do D, dollar sign nine, because I know the red, I do not want that to move. If you're changing columns left and right, you can also put a dollar sign in front of the column letter and the column letter won't change. Most of the time in this class, you only need to put a dollar sign in front of the row number. So again, D3 divided by D9, I can copy, paste. Uh, I believe you can also paste multiple times so I highlighted several ones and pasted. Again, if I paste over here, you'll see that everything shifted to the right, which is not what I wanted. All right, so I showed you how to copy and paste quickly. There's something else you can do. Uh, you can, there's a little dot here, and if you put your cursor right on the dot, it turns to this little black plus. I'm gonna left click and drag, and this almost always works. Excel is pretty good at guessing what you want it to do. So what it does, it's the same thing as if I copied and pasted it down here. It's just a shortcut. Again, 
if I just drag here, it'll highlight more. Um, if I drag here with the arrows, it'll move. But you want to go to this little bottom right corner with a plus and then drag it. All right, so that's how we can quickly duplicate things. All right, cumulative frequency. So cumulative frequency is how much has accumulated. So ignore relative frequency for a minute. Cumulative does not uh, relate to relative. It relates only to frequency. So cumulative is how many times did this temperature occur and everything above it. So cumulative frequency, all I'm going to do is go to equals D3. So that's 11. Now, the next one down is the 75 through 79, which occurred six times. So this one is six plus the 11. The next one, I'm using the equals, equals four plus six plus 11. Uh, and why did this have decimals? Because it's set to number uh, and I'm going to go to general. So I think because I pasted earlier, these, these were formatted to number and they automatically had decimal places. So if you just type something in, it had decimal places. You could stick to number and just turn the number of decimal places to zero. That's one way to do it. Or you can just select general. Okay. So, oops. Now, if you're editing in here and you accidentally click outside, um, you can get some weird things to happen. Uh, if this thing happens, just hit escape and it will cancel. All right, so you're probably getting annoyed because this takes a while to just keep typing this in. So what we're gonna do is do this in a much better way. All right, so the first one's 11, which is D3. The next one, we're gonna go with sum parentheses. Now I'm gonna go D3 colon D4, enter. And now I'm going to use this black plus, move it down. Now, unfortunately, I need to edit this a bit and I could drag it up, but I really need to make it bigger. So this arrow in the bottom right corner lets me resize. So there's the sum, sum, I'm using this arrow on the corner, enter, double click arrow on the corner, and it really helps to have a mouse or a very precise trackpad for these. All right. Now, if you notice, these are all sums, but the first one is not a sum. So let's copy this one and paste it up here. Now here, how can I use this format? Uh, I'm gonna shrink this down. And what happens, it just says D3. So I'm gonna do something weird. I'm gonna go D3 colon D3. All right, it's still 11. So it went from D3 to itself, which is a little bit weird. No problem. All right, these are all the right answers here. Your last cumulative frequency better equal the total. The first cumulative frequency is always just the first frequency. And then the other ones are the sum, just like we did. All right, there's a faster way to do this. I want the first one to always be D3. So I'm gonna do the D dollar sign three. So this will stick this to D3 and then the last one can change. So now I'm gonna delete these. So highlight them and press delete. Now on the first one, I'm gonna go with this plus and drag it down and there we go. Look at that. We can uh, see any of these. You can also see them up here happening. Oops, hit escape if you mess something up. So D3 to D5. D3 to D6, I'm just double clicking here, D3 to D7. All right, so that's cumulative frequency. Cumulative relative frequency. All right, what is this? Uh, this is the relative frequency, but also with the idea of cumulative. Uh, if you've done all this work so far, you can basically just take what we did before. I'll do this one the slow way. So the first one's just this frequency the relative frequency. The next one is the sum of these two, E3 to E4. And the next one equals sum E3 to E5. All right, 
So right now you should probably be thinking, oh, shouldn't we just do the thing we did before? So I'm gonna freeze the E3. So it's E3 to E5. And now if I duplicate this down, there we go. Uh, these two don't match the pattern. They're correct, but they don't match the patterns. But you can also use this plus to go up, not just down. So there you go. That's how to get cumulative relative frequency. When you get better at Excel, this will all go much faster. It's important that you're getting better at Excel. I know this is uh, the first time you're using Excel is a lot of information. Okay, let's, uh, one more thing. These relative frequencies should add up to one. So again, we have the sum right here. I'm gonna take this and duplicate it to the right. So what happens here, it's the sum of everything up here. So it's E3 to E7, and it is one. So that is all the relative frequencies added together need to add up to one. Some of these questions are gonna ask you for percentages, and if it was the percentage here, you would answer 36.67%. You need to multiply these frequencies by 100 to get a percentage, uh, but these are the relative frequencies. So there's a lot of information. You may need to go back, uh, rewind this video, and do it a second time.